watching OC Sports. The young and embattled Rainbow Wahine volleyball team is in Seattle for the third time in five years via an at-large berth to the national postseason. For the Hawaii veterans who have experienced the journey before, the urgency of the one-and-done scenario is palpable as the Lady Bows begin the long road to an NCAA title. Coming up, it's a first-round matchup between the Hawaii Rainbow Wahine of the Big West and the Duke Blue Devils of the ACC. And we welcome you to Alaska Airlines Arena on the campus of the University of Washington. We have a top 25 matchup in the opening round of the NCAA tournament as the 23rd ranked Rainbow Wahine of Hawaii take on number 21, the Duke Blue Devils, Kanoa Leahy and Chris McLaughlin here on site and getting ready for the NCAA tournament to get underway. See Dave Shoji there, very concerned. Saw him in the lobby of the hotel yesterday. He said, Chris, this is going to be one tough battle. It's warm inside. It certainly has been chilly outside here in Seattle the last few days. Bumped up into the 50s. We were thankful for that. But right now it's time to get it on. You can feel the intensity and the electricity a lot riding on this match. Jolene Nagel, head coach for Duke in her 16th year. The Hawaiian Tell FCU starting lineups will scroll at the bottom of your screen. Hawaii coming out in their green jerseys, black bottoms. The Duke Blue Devils in the white tops with blue trim and black bottoms. Duke coming in 22 and 7 on the year, finished third in the ACC at 14 and 4. Hawaii 21 and 6 overall. They came in with a second place finish in the Big West Conference at 13 and 3. Duke 19 appearances in the NCAA's. Hawaii 33, and yet this is the very first time that these two programs will do battle. What a draw for both teams to have to play a top 25 team in the first round unheard of. Yeah. I'm not sure what happened there with the NCAA committee, but they might have dropped the ball on that one. This is a one tough battle, I'll tell you. Yeah, Dave Shoji saying thank you very little yeah. NCAA. Hey, how about the fans though? Once again, as so often happens in little pockets of the area of the mainland, there'll be more Hawaii fans than the opponent's fans who already live on the mainland. Duke with a small little pocket of fans mm -hmm. over there of about 25 and pretty much the rest of the arena for Hawaii. Yeah, we have a scattering of green shirts, even some tea leaves around the area. There's even the Hawaii band that made its way up to Seattle. It will be the Blue Devils, though, serving first and getting ready to slap it into play to get this thing started. Kelsey Williams, the starting setter, the ACC setter of the year for the Blue Devils. First set for Hawaii goes to Taimana Olevao, and she's dug up by Williams. So now Jamie Obaimi from the outside for Duke, and she is a first team all ACC selection. 3.44 kills per set. That's second on the team, and she pounds it down for the opening point. And she was an ABCA All-American last year. She's got the live arm to be sure. So a quality start for Duke. Hawaii scrambles on the next serve. It's time on Olival, dug it back over the net, but it is bumped into the net. Hawaii keeps the rally alive. Now middle set to McGill. Nice play off the net there by Duke. It was Christina Vucic keeping it alive, and then the scramble, so Hawaii with the advantage. Taylor Higgins goes to Mano Olival, a low set, and the dig there by Sasha Carolaw. Now Obaini from the outside. Higgins pops it up. Good sequence here. Blue Devils go middle set. That's Jordan Tucker and Olivia McGill making her presence felt here in Seattle. The number one offense in the country in assists and kills in Duke going up against the number six blocking team in the country. I think that's where we're going to see all the action tonight is at the net. And Olivia McGill, who grew up very close to here, Shoreline, Washington, has some friends and family in the seats. Step out goes to Tucker. She's blocked back. Duke again on the attack. It's Vucic, and that's dug up by Higgins. So Mendoza bump sets right side to Nikki Taylor, and a good job putting that one up in the air by Carol Law. Little pitter patter at the net. Hawaii comes out of there with it. Now Mano Leval off the block. Right there's McGill. So Higgins sets up Taylor too tight to the net. 
but it'll be a net violation called against Duke. I think Obaney came into the string, and so Hawaii gets the point. We got our first look at Sasha Karloff, the all ACC right now, uh, the barrel. She popped up Nikki Taylor's last rocket. She averages five kills per set. She's a good one. So two serving one. Taylor Higgins tickles the tape on that one. Step out goes to Tucker. And she put a hammering on that one, but missed the court wide. And that's another point for Hawaii off to a 3-1 start, Chris. Boy, she was inches from getting the side out there and the point. Great swing, great connection between her and Kelsey Williams. So here is Taylor Higgins. Five service aces, the final two matches of the regular season. A good serve there. Joust at the net. Duke keeps it alive. Bump set goes to Obamey on the outside. She's blocked back. Now they'll go back row. And that's Emily Scalar. She's blocked back. And Roof, it'll be a net violation called against the Blue Devils. And right now, Olivia McGill and company putting up a wall right there at the twine. They really are making it difficult for, for Duke to get any points on transition swings. Hawaii dominating at the net right now. Higgins with the jump serve. Another good one. Backtracking the pass made by Carol Law. It's Scalar from the back row, and she's able to work off of that triple block proposed by the Wahine. Emily Scalar is their go-to gal, all ACC first team, all American. We'll see most of the sets go to her tonight, that's for sure. Four and a half kills a set. The ACC Player of the Year last year. First teamer this season. Nikki Taylor off the block. Now this goes to Vucic, the lefty swing and on her knees, the dig by Higgins. Taylor, and she's roofed. Jordan Tucker all over it. Six foot sophomore from Prairie Village, Kansas. I guess Jordan Tucker wants to get in on the block party. Seeing Nikki Taylor taking a couple of swings from the outside position. The pass by Manuel Val. Here's Taylor again from off the net. Goes high hands and down for the point. Yeah, that's one thing that Dave Shoji may experiment with tonight is giving Nikki Taylor more swings to the left rather than exclusively putting her on the right. So five serving three, and it's Savannah Kahakai. 147 digs, 11 aces on the year. Back to slap it into play. Here it comes. Set goes middle. Tucker denied access by McGill. Oh, the Seattle prep star putting it down to the floor. Olivia McGill, such an intense player. Transfer from the University of Arizona. Happy to be in Hawaii. Loving her time. Kahakai with the serve. They go right side, here's Vucic. Diving save, Kahakai. Bump set to Kalei Greeley. Puts it down at the hard angle. Kalei Greeley warming up here in Alaska Airlines Arena. Sharp angle. Nice bump set by Taylor Higgins. So how uh, Greeley a little wrist away there. Greeley on the all-freshman team for the Big West Conference announced this week. And another block for Hawaii. This time, Nikki Taylor got the gist of it. But that is an imposing front line right now in this rotation for Hawaii. You got Taylor at 6'3", you got McGill at 6'2", you got Greeley at 6'2". That's a, about as imposing a front line as Hawaii can offer up. You know we're in postseason form. We got the net camera angle. We're going big time here yeah. this evening. <laughs> Overpass, McGill whiffed on it. And it's a point for Duke. You don't see that every day. I think McGill was expecting that the Duke center was going to touch it, and she did. She pulled her hand away at the last second. And yeah, it was uh, a whiff. So four serving eight. It's Karolov sending it into play. Right side set, Taylor. The block was not formed, and she made Duke pay. Well, she went up against a pretty good block there, too, and Whitaker and Scalar, 6-2 and 6-3. Taylor challenged them and just buries it down the line. Even that all-ACC libero of the year, Karloff couldn't handle that one. Now, two straight Big West Conference first-team selections for Nikki Taylor. Not bad for freshman and sophomore campaigns. Here's Taylor now working off the net, and she went a little too hard angle on that one, missed wide. Point for the Blue Devils. Duke 8-3 this season in non-conference matchups. 
Also two and three versus top 25 teams. Now that's a little wrinkle for Hawaii. They're 0 and five versus teams that made the NCAA tournament field. So they're looking to break through here in the opening round of the tournament. Greeley, right down to the middle of the Terraflex. There may be the X factor for this match is Kalei Greeley. You know, she's been up and down this year, more up than down. But when she gets going like this and hits seams like this and buries it down in front of the back row, Hawaii could be in for a good night. 10 serving five, it's Taylor with the serve. Left side set, it's Sklar. And you see the intelligence that she applies when she takes a crack at it, working the block in her favor. Well, she knew exactly where Taylor Higgins, Hawaii's smallest blocker, was located, and she aimed for her. You're right, smart play. 6'3", junior from San Jose, California. 16th in career kills at Duke. Step out goes to Kalea Adolfo. The Molokai slide made the trip to the greater Northwest. <laughs> and now, and now Taylor Higgins is really starting to move the ball around. Antenna to antenna, getting everybody involved in the offense. And that's why they looked so good last Saturday night against Davis was the offense was diverse. Hawaii hitting 188 here as a team in the opening set. Step out. And this is Elise Whitaker dug up to the net. The joust at the net, rat -a -tat it around. It'll be Obaney with the swing, dug up by Mendoza. Now Manu Olevao, that one hit the tape. Pancake save by Whitaker. Obaney dumps it over, right there was Greeley. So Adolfo sets Manu Olevao. How and about the back set from Pelay Adolfo? All those middle blockers love the back set. It's the only place she really could have gone concerning the way she was facing. And Manu Olival just jumps up, gets on that ladder you like to call him out, and just drills it inside the block. Sharp angle. Greeley with the serve. 12 serving six here in the opening set. Bump set goes to Obaney tight to the net, and she was able to plug it through that Hawaii block. It was Adolfo and Higgins trying to challenge her. Obaney, a 5'11 senior from Carmel, Indiana. Now, Laura Williams, number one, 5'10 junior from Western Springs, Illinois, on the serve. Jump set goes to Mano Leval off the fingertips. That's dug up by Sklar. Step out goes to Tucker. The push deep was sniffed out by Greeley. Now, nice hit that time by Taylor, sent over the net. Hawaii with the advantage. It's Mano Leval, the dink. And nobody was able to get it in the middle of the floor for Duke. No hesitation on Duke's side of the net that time on defense. Why he got, really got a break there. So Anna Ponce comes on. Seems as though Duke right now, the team more trying to feel its way into this match as compared to Hawaii. Remember, these are familiar surroundings for some of the Wahine players and the coaching staff. Three of them were here two years ago. Here's Ponce into the net, it goes. So side out and point for Duke. This is the third time in five years that Hawaii has opened the NCAA tournament in the Seattle sub-regional. Both previous times, the season ended at the hands of the Washington Huskies. They will be taking on New Hampshire in the second game of this opening day. And the winner of that one, of course, will get the winner of this one. Higgins goes to McGill. Oh, wow. We haven't seen that in a while with the pal ball is passed off the net to about the seven or eight foot line, and then it's fired up to the middle attacker, McGill. This is a sweet little set. Nice timing, good reach by McGill, split block, point Hawaii. 14 serving eight, Higgins sends it into the net. I'll tell you one number that's probably not going to stick around all night long, and that is the four kills, five errors, negative 042 that Duke is hitting right now. You know, they're the number one assist team in the country, the number one, number two kill leader in the country. I doubt their offense will stutter, sputter this long. What do you think, Noah? I would agree with you. 273 is the percentage for Hawaii in comparison, and it's another service error, so we've had a handful of those already here in the opening set, and it is Hawaii first of 15 here to get the NCAA tournament on its way. Hawaii up a half dozen. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Chris. Well, for Hawaii, they've got to be precise and patient. Precise in their passing so the middles can attack. Patient because Duke will dig a lot of balls. And for Duke, they got to ramp up their serving velocity. They want to get Hawaii out of system, create some poor passing, and take Hawaii's middles out of the match if they can. The officials for tonight's match, Patsy Malta is on top of the ladder. Jason Olsen downstairs. Julie Jones and Bedden Goodwin 
are the line judges. Good look here at the Alaska Airlines Arena. Beautiful facility. And as is the case with just about every athletic arena or stadium in these parts, it can get loud. Yeah. It's a, it's a great venue. Great to see Hawaii's band here. I don't know who put up the put up the, uh, the coin for that, but it sure is paying off because they did the national great job of the national yeah. anthem. And the uh, cheerleaders here, good festive atmosphere. Kahakai serving out of the timeout. The right side set, that goes to Brianna Atkinson. And she misses the court wide. That's a point for Hawaii. Atkinson, a 5'11 junior from Ashburn, Virginia. Five players from the state of California donning this Duke Blue Devil roster. Just goes to show the scope of their recruiting, right? Exactly, yeah. If you want to, and if you want to bulk up your roster with good players, the California's not a bad place to start. Kahakai forces the overpass. So advantage for Hawaii. McGill in the middle had to dink it over. Saved by Scalar. And it will be hit out. Jordan Tucker leaving something to be desired on that send over the net. Well, Duke really struggling now offensively. Four kills, eight errors, hitting negative 148. Not a good number. They're going to call a time, time out and get organized. Yeah, Jolene Nagel going to talk things over. The 16th year head coach for the Blue Devils will be back. OC Sports, presented on Oceanic Time Order Cable, is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii and Kaiser Permanente. Welcome back. The newest line of UH apparel and spirit items are now available at the H-Zone stores at Ward Center and in the Stan Sheriff Center. All proceeds benefit UH teams and student-athletes, or shop online at hzoneonline.com. Hawaii up 17 serving nine, and it is Savannah Kahakai still behind the service line out of the timeout. Set goes high and away. This is Scalar, and she found the sideline for a Duke point. Well, she is one talented athlete. You know, she's young in the volleyball world, by the way. She played soccer and basketball most of her life. In the ninth grade, she took up volleyball, and she is a phenom. Yeah. Her percentage of last Saturday night, 406 against North Carolina State. Here's the right side set to Nikki Taylor. How about the diving save by Chloe De Pasquale? But nothing materialized after that for Washington. That was sort of a blown opportunity to extend that rally. It's another point for Hawaii. Sarah Mendoza now to serve. One of three individuals honored over the weekend on senior night for Hawaii against UC Davis. Scalar. Going over the block, one hand save Greeley, one hand second touch by Mendoza. But it was Greeley sliding underneath the net, and she gets up and appears to be walking gingerly. And that is certainly a concern for Dave Shoji and the Rainbow Wahine. Let's take another look at this. She just fell awkwardly, right? They always, she turned her ankle. Yeah. yeah, not a knee, it's an ankle. It could be ice taped up. And she is grimacing in pain, and she will be escorted to the bench there by Renee Shigemura, the trainer for Hawaii. And yeah, it just seemed like that ankle kind of collapsed on her. And so concern now for Kalei Greeley, and if she has to sit for an extended period of time, that takes a huge weapon away from this Rainbow Wahine arsenal. Yeah, so it'll, it'll change things considerably for Dave Shoji. He and Scott Wong talking right now about what we're going to do. My guess is it's, it's going to be uh, Ginger Long probably coming in. Uh, could be Megan Huff coming in if they want more size. Uh, you know, so there's a, a lot of different options. Well, while we have an opportunity, let's go inside the numbers presented by Levitt, Yamane, and Sold. And the number is three. That is the number of ABCA top 25 teams in this Seattle sub-regional. Yes, the only one of 16 sub-regionals with three ranked teams. Now, of course, the NCAA selection committee looks more at RPI than the national rankings. That said, it's kind of peculiar that you have a sub-regional that consists of these kinds of squads. Yeah, very, very unusual to, to see that. Uh, the NCAA has a chance to really move things around. Once they see the top 16 teams, they have a lot of flexibility. In, you know, and how they want to keep teams in the region for keep costs down for travel. Uh, but you'd think that they would also take a look at the coaches poll and see that uh, the top 25 teams, they don't really need to have anybody match up in the first round. See Kalei Greeley trying to walk off some of the pain. Uh, 
It appears as though she will not be returning to the match immediately. And in fact, as you called, Chris, Ginger Long, the 5'11 junior from Kihei Maui out of Kamehameha Maui, she will replace Kalei Greeley in the lineup. All right, the Seattle Regional and Upper Brackets. You see Hawaii versus Duke. Number three, Washington versus New Hampshire. And then at Lincoln, Nebraska, Kansas State, Utah, Hofstra, and the Cornhuskers. Ginger Long has been playing well as of late. We know it's her, her last time around. We know she's going to give it her all, that's for sure. She's going to graduate out of the program. Yeah, she was honored on senior night, even though she's still a junior in athletic standing. The set goes right side to Taylor. Off the block and down. So Taylor continues her effectiveness. That is now her fourth kill. She's hitting 200, and she'll retreat back to serve 19, serving 11. One of the things that Dave showed you may have Taylor Higgins do, and that is keep the ball away from Ginger Long for a while. Let her get warmed up, used to the game. Deliver the ball to other people. Scalar from off the net, blocked back. It'll be a bump set from Karolov to Scalar. That's off the fingertips, and right there is Long. Higgins pushes it over on the second touch. Diving save there by Whitaker. Scalar put a little more heavy pepper on it, but a great save by Mendoza. Now Long from the outside. And that one popped up by Karolov. Two-handed over, free chance for Hawaii. Mendoza, back bump set to Long. Big swing, and a big oh, kill wow. for Ginger Long. That may have been Ginger Long's hardest hit all year. She was lit up. Wow. Great back bump set by Sarah Mendoza. Long goes over the block. That was a pretty hefty block as well. Kudos to Ginger. Long three kills on senior night for Hawaii, including match point against UC Davis. Joust at the net, and somebody got into the twine. They'll call it against Taylor Higgins. So a point for Duke. And that ball not passed up with very much precision or control. Pretty easy dig. Should not have been uh, pushing Taylor Higgins that close to the net. So 12 serving 20, here is Emily Scalar, leads the team with 28 service aces, attacks Kahakai, and she handles it well. Now Long, oh, she is smoking that ball. And off of one leg, the hit by Elise Whitaker goes long. Duke wanted to touch at the net, no such call. It's a point for Hawaii, and Jolene Nagel up off the bench to discuss a few things with the rotation. I'm, I'm surprised that this far into the first set, 21-12, uh, Duke is still hitting negative. Five kills, nine errors, negative 118. That's unheard of. Here's Obaney. That goes off the block and out. And in fact, they're going to call a net violation against Hawaii, so that'll be a point for Duke. But how about the first few cracks by Ginger Long? Oh, she brought the heavy hand from Honolulu. She is ready to play. As Kalei Greeley continues to get looked at. Remember, early in the year, when Nikki Taylor was out, she was hurt with her elbow. About the first three weeks, Ginger Long was starting, playing all the time, playing all the way around. So she, this is not unfamiliar territory for Ginger Long. Good serve there, diving pass. And there's a bump set to Mano Oliveau. She went hard angle. And despite the effort of Laura Williams laying out, that's another point for the Rainbow Wahine. They're up nine, Chris. You know, the hit hard angle is really tough this time of year. Your legs are a little tired. You're going to jump extra high to hit that sharp angle. And certainly, Mano Oliveau has got some live legs right now. Three kills for the junior. No errors, hitting 333. And it is on a punts behind the service line. So a promising start here in this opening set for Hawaii. Can they finish the deal and get up on the Blue Devils? Set goes back row to Sklar. And how about that one? They just dove as it crossed the plane of the net right in front of the crouched over Taylor. Sklar is going to get a lot of sets, front row, back row. You see three blockers there. That block was not very well formed. Had a lot of holes in it. That's her fourth kill. She's hitting 300. But Duke still negative numbers as a team. Yeah. We've been talking about it throughout this first set, Chris. Now negative .056. Higgins goes high and away. Mano Levao off the fingertips of the block right there was Karolov. Obaini, the block had not formed, but Long is able to stick the dig. Now Mano Levao through the block and down. Point Hawaii. Well, Mano Levao is clapping, saying, give the ball to me, give it to me. You got to love players like that, especially outside attackers who say, I want the ball. And there you see Mano Levao challenging the block. 
and getting the side out. Taylor Higgins took something off. The pass by Sklar. It'll go back row to Sklar. Right there is Higgins. So Mendoza. Bump set to Taylor. Had to readjust the feet. Took something off. Chance now for the Blue Devils. Bump set goes right side. This is Atkinson. May have been an out ball. It was played off the touch by Long. And that is definitely an out ball. But a net violation called against Duke. So Nikki Taylor is bailed out on that one. And a point for Hawaii. It's a low ball here in the opening set. Net violation on number 11, Jordan Tucker, right there. Oh, the officials all over it. So is our net camp. Gotta love it. How about that? And a timeout will be taken by Duke head coach Jolene Nagel. Now under Nagel in now 16 seasons, the Blue Devils have won 20 or more matches 13 times and 25 or more six times. She was a head coach prior to her stint at Duke at both Cornell and Georgetown. Uh, so she knows what she's doing, and this is a Duke Blue Devil program that is a perennial contender in the ACC. Yeah, she's had a great job there, and actually her assistant coach, an associate head coach, uh, is a player that, that I coached back in 1987 when I had the U.S. Olympic Festival, a guy named John Wasluski. He and Alan Allen were on the same squad. I, I was lucky enough to be able to coach them, and I saw him. I hadn't seen him in, you know, what's that, almost 30 years, and uh, it was fun to see him this week and reconnect, and he's been here for 16 years as long as Nagel, so they've been quite a quite a good uh, pairing those two yeah some of the players some of the as well as there on the left yeah some of the players some of the training staff they, they lit up when you said that you coached <laughs> as they refer to was was yeah they wanted some stories on was <laughs> You saw Kalei Greeley moments ago. I'm not a lip reader, but it looked like she told Dave, I'm okay, in the Hawaii huddle. I hope you are a good lip reader. It would be nice, but you know what? I'd leave Ginger Long in right now. Let her, let her keep ride going. Ride the hot streak, right? Yeah, ride her. She's playing well. Yeah, Ginger Long, one of the subplots, obviously, and side stories of this opening set. The apparent ankle injury to Kalei Greeley went off to the side. She's still kind of loosening it up. We'll see if she returns to the match. But in her place, Ginger Long with a kill. Three digs. She's played well. And aloha ball for Hawaii in the first. And a good timeout by Jolene Nagel as Higgins sends it into the net. Well, the one thing Hawaii has got to avoid right here is any kind of Duke run or any kind of Duke momentum going into the second set. Hawaii needs to put the nail in the coffin if they want to take their momentum into the second set instead of Dukes. Here's Chloe DePasquale, 5'8 sophomore from Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. Floats it deep, pass by Long, it's perfect. Middle set, McGill, and there you go. Set one in the books. Credit Ginger Long for coming into the match, unexpected, and playing at a high level helping the Rainbow Wahine close it out in impressive fashion, Chris. They win by double digits in the opening set of the NCAA tournament. So the Rainbow Wahine up 1-0 on the Duke Blue Devils. Still a whole lot of V-ball to come in Seattle. Back here at Alaska Airlines Arena. Let's take a look at how it works. Brought to you by Central Pacific Bank, Chris. We're going to take a look at the early in the first set. Hawaii exhibits some amazing connection between Taylor Higgins and Olivia McGill. It's the 31 set. Ball's passed off the net a little bit, and Higgins just fires it to McGill. Very tough timing set. That ball's going to be set in just the right height and just the right speed. And the player is in the, at the uh, net has got to get up and get up pretty high like Olivia McGill does right there. And that's how it works. Hawaii hitting 270 in the opening set, winning 25-15. So making a statement here to start this Seattle sub-regional against the 21st ranked team in the country, the Duke Blue Devils. I think Hawaii can't get too cocky right here. You know, Duke did not play a typical Duke set. They hit negative 051, seven kills, nine errors. That is not a typical Duke effort. Uh, Hawaii's got to expect that some other players are going to step up. Sklar had a great first set, as we expected she would. Four kills, one error. She got 11 of their 39 swings. Uh, but the other players, you know, Tucker's off to a slow start. No kills, five errors, hitting negative 500. Don't expect that to continue. So Hawaii's going to uh, really, go, I think, going to have a much, much tougher set number two. Yeah, Duke, which is 
one of the better teams in the ACC. In fact, the best when it comes to digs per set, having issues in the passing and digging department, and seem to be somewhat intimidated early by that Hawaii block. We'll see how they adjust. Here's Sklar on the opening sequence of set number two, dug up by Ginger Long. Long gets the set from the back row, takes something off. Diving save, Kelsey Williams. Bump set goes to Sklar, blocked back. Right there was Williams. So the bump set goes right side to Vucic, and she's blocked back. Now Sklar again, a third time, right there's Mano Oleval. So Higgins goes right side, Taylor, and that's dug up by Vucic. Sklar, how about a fourth time? That's dug up by Mendoza. Time on Oleval, off the fingertips and down for a Hawaii point. That's what I like about that play, Kanoa. Sklar, their best player, gets like three or four swings, Hawaii blocks, and Hawaii is patient enough to just stay in the play. Taylor made an off-speed shot, Long made an off-speed shot, just to keep going and give their block a chance to score, or give Ty Manu Olebao a chance to score. Five kills, zero errors so far for Manu Olebao, and that time Duke could not transition into a legitimate attack, and so Vucic sends it into the twine. Another point for Hawaii in this second set, starting similarly to what we saw in the first. I like the way Hawaii's uh, exhibiting precision in their passing and patience nice in the rallies. Shot. And a good serve by Higgins. Here's Vucic. That one popped up by Mendoza. Long chases down the second touch. Higgins has to bump set, bump pass it over. Chance now for Duke. They go outside to Sklar. That's blocked back. Punched over by Vucic. Good diving save by Higgins. Now Manole Val. Right there is Sklar. But into the net it goes. And again, the Blue Devils discombobulated point Hawaii. Hawaii's ball control there, just a little bit too strong. Duke, you know, digging balls into the net like that, not as strong a ball, ball control. So it's been all Taylor Higgins behind the service line so far here early in set two. Puts another hammer on it. Sklar getting a whole lot of opportunities, and that time she made the most of it. Goes off of Mendoza and out for the Blue Devils' first point of the second stanza. Well, Sklar can only be stopped for so long. You knew she was eventually going to come up with the big kill. Third in the ACC this year in kills per set. You know, back in 2011, she was California. Big state. Gatorade player of the year. Yeah. That says something. Here's Taylor. Tried to go hard angle, put a hurt on it, but missed it wide. So a point for Duke. And they're right back in there, down one, two, serving three. It is Sasha Karolov doing the serving. Karolov tops in the ACC, 25th in the nation in digs per set. She's also got 21 service aces, so she's tough from behind the service line as well. She's been fun to watch back there. She's also a primary passer for them, so she's going to be getting a lot of serve reception chances. A few moments being taken to wipe some perspiration off of the Hawaii side of the Terraflex. Middle set, McGill dropping a bomb in the middle. You know, Olivia Let McGill go, knows go, she's in up. Seattle. She knows where she is. She knows she's got friends and family. She's going to turn it on like that. If I'm Taylor Higgins, I'm going to feed her as much as possible till her arm falls off. Hit 416, <laughs> Chris, in the regular season. That is just one percentage point behind the all-time single season record put in by Angelica Jungquist. Here's Taylor from the right side. Good dig by Karolov. Sklar from off the net. Right there is Mendoza. Higgins goes middle to McGill. The dink! Pancake save. Nicely done there in the back row. It'll be Hawaii from the outside and putting it down is Ginger Long. How about that? Boy, how about Ginger being the firewoman coming in and saving the day? Look at this pancake dig right there. Nice pop-up by Paradiso. Step out. This is Whitaker, and she's able to go off the block and down for a Duke point. But that has become a story here in the early portion of this match. The Ginger Long effect. She has impacted this match positively after going in for an injured Calais Greeley in that opening set. Ginger a little bit too far off the net there to make an effective block. Got to penetrate over that net. Long with the pass there. They go right side to Taylor against the double block. The save by Nicole Elitrosh. And Hawaii with another opportunity. Middle set, McGill. And she's able to put it down in the middle of the Duke floor. Here we go, Kyle. Here we go, here we go. Tell you, with McGill, 
He's loving being home. Four kills, one error, hitting 429 and three blocks. Just another day at the office for Olivia McGill. Mendoza now with the serve. With a scramble by Duke. It's Scalar is still able to put some heat on it past the diving Higgins. Great back bump set. Scalar handled it. She's got, she's got such a good uh, step close. There's a nice back bump set by Williams. And, and Scalar just moves the ball all over. She has a wide range, line, angle. And that one sent in and to the net. net. She's yeah. got that one, too. Everybody's got that shot. You, I think you have that shot, don't you? <laughs> On a regular basis. <laughs> it's seven serving four. Nikki Taylor to send it into play. Pass by Ella Trosh. They go outside. Oh, baby. And a net violation called against Hawaii. I think that's the third net violation called against Taylor Higgins. And Taylor's, I think she's really pushing the envelope up there, trying to penetrate over the net, trying to be a big blocker instead of just a, maybe a soft blocker who just gets a hand on it and keeps it alive for the back row to dig, not try to be a, a stuff blocker. Laura Williams with the serve, into the twine it goes. This has not necessarily been, from the Duke perspective, an exhibition in quality service. Normally they're an excellent serving team. They out, out ace their opponents. You know, they've got like 143 aces on the year and only 101.3 per set. Tucker pushing it to the deep corner. No Wahine there to cover. And a nifty decision there by Jordan Tucker. Tucker gets her first kill of the night. One kill, five errors, and a negative 364. I'm sure she'll be back. Normally hitting 328, so quite the anomaly here. And Speaking of anomalies, Taiman Olevao usually handles that kind of serve, but it was slow coming, and Kelsey Williams with the service ace for Duke, and they're down one and scrambling to get back into this match. Williams took something off, and another service error. Trying to do the yo-yo approach, where you serve a player deep, then you serve him short, you get him going back and forth, wondering where the next serve is going to be. Kelsey Williams, an interesting story. She's a 5'11 senior, but she was the backup setter last year behind Maggie Dykmeister. But Dykmeister had off-season shoulder surgery, wasn't cleared until August, so Williams had assumed the starting position and played so well that the coaches couldn't take her off the floor. Obeyme on the delayed middle set goes through the Hawaii block and down. Nice little play there where they bring Obeyme in. Almost like a, a tandem play where she runs right on top of the other player. See right there, right on top of the middle attacker. Well, he wasn't fooled, though. Mono Olivella right there to help out. Jamie O'Baney doing her usual thing. Five kills, one error, hitting 364 so far. Eight serving nine. Mono Olivella, tough time on the first touch. Long has to two-hand it over. Free chance for the Blue Devils. They go high and away to Sklar over the double block. Dug up by Long. Second touch, Taylor. And Long will send a free ball Duke's way, but misses the court wide. Point Blue Devils, and we are knotted at nine apiece. A little look of displeasure from Dave Shoji. De Pasquale with the run up serve. Floats it deep. Mano Leval the pass. They go back row right side to Taylor. About as good as anybody from behind the three meter. She really is effective in the, in the first set alone. Uh, Nikki Taylor had five kills, two errors. Now she's got six kills, three errors. Got a block, three digs, playing great defense. Taylor Higgins with the serve. Keeping them in, so important. She's so effective when she does so, but Christina Vucic was effective on that attack. 6'4", junior, obviously a lefty for Morrisville, North Carolina. She brings a different sort of an angle there. That's why they brought James Carr on board, the left-handed volunteer coach who wears the tight shirts. <laughs> and he, he certainly and does, and he, he'll certainly be happy you brought that up. He simulated Vucic right there. There's Taylor, this time from the left side, so working all angles with Nikki Taylor, and it's a point for Hawaii. Yeah, James Ka, I believe it's officially a medium, right? The That's James right. Ka sports? That's right. Sometimes he wears Taylor Higgins shirt jerseys, <laughs> just in case. Or Tatiana Ponce, Ponce's shirts. <laughs> but serve. he's a lefty, though. He, you, yeah. you know, he actually did simulate uh, Vucic this week in practice. 
Good scramble here. Hawaii goes middle to McGill. Saved by Scalar and the middle set ill-timed as Elise Whitaker waved at it to no avail. Point for Hawaii, they're up a deuce. Hawaii struggling in this second set to string together long runs like they did in the first set. I knew that would happen because Duke was definitely going to play better. They go step out to Whitaker, and that one gets gobbled up. Ginger Long and Olivia McGill. Remember how tight this block is. Ginger steps in. McGill steps over. Good penetration. Fourth block for Olivia McGill. And a 3-0 run here for the girls in green. Set right side, Busic over the block. Right there was Mendoza, so Higgins goes high and away. Long, winds up, uncoils. Diving saved by Carolong. Now Scalar from the outside, plugs it through that Hawaii double block. And in for a Duke point. Scalar at 6'3", just an imposing figure up front. She's got power, she's got finesse. As we said before, California State Player of the Year in 2011. Nicole Elitrosh, freshman from L.A., with the serve, pass Kahakai. Here's Long again, off the fingertips. Dug up by DePasquale, middle set goes to Whitaker. That's dug up by Mendoza. Taylor, cross court. Right there was Elitrosh. Now Sklar, tried to push it past McGill. He'll work it back to Sklar, off the block, and McGill plays it off the first touch. Now Long, that's blocked back. Taylor right there. This sequence continues. McGill couldn't get all of it. So Duke plays it back. Sklar down the line, dug up. Two-handed style by Higgins. Now Ginger Long from off the net. Carroll off the dig. Middle set Whitaker, the dink. Diving save Mendoza. Taylor the swing. And this keeps going. Sklar again. Off the block and down. And a long rally finally comes to a close. And it benefits the Blue Devils. How about Sarah Mendoza giving up her body right here. To keep that rally alive, credit the Blue Devils, though, for being just a little more patient at the end. So Ella Trosh will serve 12, serving 13. Handcuffs Kahakai a bit. Bump set goes to Long, and she hits it long by inches. And we're knotted up again at 13. You know, that last rally was so long, Hawaii got four digs in that rally. That's uh, one-fourth of the digs they normally get in the set. Third tie of this second stanza. Middle set, McGill, and it's pinballed around momentarily, but finally it trickles down to the Terraflex. Kill for Hawaii, another put down for McGill. She has five, hitting 400 to go along with four blocks. <laughs> 14 serving 13, much more tightly contested second set. Whitaker. That one did not formulate at all for the Blue Devils, so a timeout on the floor. Hawaii first to 15 for the second straight set. They're up a deuce. OC Sports, presented on Oceanic Time Order Cable, is sponsored by Strong. And Hawaii Honda Dealers. Some of the scenery that's available here in Seattle. In fact, right outside the arena, that's Lake Washington. Some of the geese. Uh... Where's their wetsuit? <laughs> <laughs> it's freezing out there. Yeah, yeah. They can handle the temperatures much better than we can. The Canadian geese, I guess they're used to it a little bit more than we are. And you see a smattering of Hawaii fans. There are even a few tea leaves making an appearance here at Alaska Airlines Arena. Glad we could join you, Kanoa Leahy, Chris McLaughlin. Kishi just joined us. Kishi just joined us. First set, a rub for Hawaii. Second set, Duke playing much better, hitting 241. Nine kills, two errors. Hawaii hitting 208. But now Hawaii starting to ramp it up from behind the service line. Sarah Mendoza, three-point run. Mendoza with the ace out of the break. This one played by Karolov. Set goes high and away to Skalar. The dink, and Higgins unable to get under it. Had the spatula out, but couldn't quite get underneath that offer. Dave shows you gets up off the bench and tells Higgins, go there and wait for the tip. We'll block the line. We're going to force her to hit cross court into Mendoza, who's playing really well in the back row right now. So Sklar serves. 
Long will take a crack at it. Diving save, Karolov. Doesn't get much better than that. Obaney! Oh, she put a hurt on that one. And Higgins felt it. Wow, great swing by Jamie Obaney. Picks up her sixth kill, hitting 417. Long also gives a good rip, but Karloff right there to dig it. Obaney almost uh, gives a facial. Long to try to get it back for Hawaii, and she does. Ginger Long. Three kills, hitting .077. Five digs. She even has a block assist. Ginger Long playing very well for the injured Kalei Greeley. Taylor into the net. Yeah, if you're just joining us again, Hawaii winning by double digits in the opening set. 25-15, but one of the subplots that has transpired here, Kalei Greeley still working on that ankle. Turned her right ankle in that opening set. Ginger Long replaced her, has played pretty well. But the question is, can Greeley make a return? Or if Ginger Long continues to play well, do they just wait it out and see if they can ride this one into the second round as Kalei Adolfo able to work the step out? I like the way Taylor Higgins again is trying to go antenna to antenna, forcing the middle blockers for Duke to have to work a lot. The way hitting 266, Duke back into the positive range, hitting 100. Obaney rises up, that one blocked back, played off the block by Tucker. Obaney a second time, Mendoza, that is beautiful. Manole Vau took something off Karolov right there. So Obaney from off the net, diving save Mendoza again, Adolfo the set to Manole Vau. And it's off the touch and down for a Hawaii point. Hawaii, some great patience there. Great set by Kalei Adolfo in the middle of that rally. And at the end, and there's actually Adolfo gets the, the assist right there. And there's the touch by Karloff. Hawaii on a roll right now. Yeah, try two assists for Kalei Adolfo <laughs> here in this match. That one pushed over on the second touch by Maggie Dykmeister, who has been inserted into the match at the setter position, was the starter last year, one of the team captains, 6'2 senior, but she missed the court. Point Hawaii, timeout Blue Devils. So the Rainbow Wahine distancing themselves a little bit once again here late in the second set. Hey Bill, project going well? It's going great. The roads are in, the homes are going up. Hey, by the way, thanks for the business line of credit. It was really helpful. Okay, good. Let me know what you need. Can do. All right. All right, man. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, you still working? Yeah, I hit till seven. Okay, good night. Great relationships, longer hours. At American Savings Bank, our business is to help your business. The fall that I had was a surprise. I was in the hospital for close to 28 days, and this just happened totally unplanned, uncalled for, and it was devastating. Having HMSA made a huge difference. The big takeaway for me, now that I'm 68, is that I appreciate every moment that I feel good. When you're hurt and in the hospital, you just don't want to have to worry about anything. gift for every occasion at Big Island Candies. Visit them in Hilo at Ala Moana Center or click on BigIslandCandies.com to view their entire collection and place your order today. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena on the campus of University of Washington. The Duke Blue Devils, they are certainly a two-headed monster that has been the trend over the course of this season, Scalar and Obamey, and again, they are riding those two superstar hitters 15 kills, two errors between them. Look at the rest of the team. Three kills and 10 errors. Ginger Long serving for Hawaii out of the timeout. And it's Obame blocked back. And she's able to two-hand it over. But they are going to call her for the illegal double hit. And so a point for Hawaii. And they're up a handful. A 4-0 run for the Lady Bulls. Ginger Long doing a nice job of keeping that last serve in the court after the timeout. Pressure on Duke. Sklar from the back row, Long touched it up off of the block. Good save on the second touch by Mendoza. Free chance for Duke. Step out goes to Tucker, the dink. Pancake save, Mendoza. Manoli Val slaps it over. Pushed over by Dykmeister and off of Hawaii and down. Great scramble on both sides of the net on that sequence and the crowd applauds the effort. 
play. Duke certainly does not drop off much at the center position, that's for sure. You see Dijkmeister right there at 6-2, dumping that ball over. Last year, preseason, all ACC. I will mention All-American last year. Step out goes to Adolfo. And a laser beam off of the palm of Kalei Adolfo. Wow. How about that swing? Against the double block to block it out. They knew Kalei was going to get it, but does not quite get out to the antenna in time. So right now, Chris, Hawaii out serving, out digging, out hitting, out blocking how about, the Duke Blue Devils. How about Mendoza? She's got eight digs just in this set. Ten digs altogether. Tucker off of one leg, didn't get all of it, got enough of it. A knuckle type of hit over and it works out as a kill. And Dave showed you, he reps from the bench knowing how long that ball was in the air and five people watched it hit the floor. It balls in the air now, now two, three, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, and five people watched it go down. So he does not like that kind of defense, I'll tell you. That's not Shoji defense. So De Pasquale will serve for the Blue Devils down four. Pass Manuel Leval Higgins goes middle to McGill, and she's able to plug it through that blocking down. And again, that sort of go, short go, outside go. set up, to McGill, go. it's worked out a couple of occasions. Well, it's an against the flow kind of set that Taylor Higgins That's delivers, up. where she's going away from the net, then sets back toward McGill at the net. Tough set, tough timing, but when it works, the other team rarely is ready for it. We'll watch it again. Watch Higgins go one way, McGill the other. Block gets up, but McGill finds a way to get inside that block. Here's the net cam seeing how far those hands are off the net. All four hands stayed on their own side of the net and right up at the net level. Did not penetrate the net, hence there was room for the ball to sneak inside. You see the kill percentages heavily in favor of Hawaii. And yeah, I think you pointed it out a couple of times. Taylor Higgins playing a really good match right now at the setter position for Hawaii. Dave Shoji, Scott Wong crouched down doing some coaching. Dave Shoji celebrating his birthday yesterday, turning 68. You know who else celebrated a birthday yesterday? I believe it was your father. Jim Leahy, yeah. yes. Happy so, birthday. Happy Is he birthday watching to, right now? To both of those guys. He's probably watching it. I would imagine so. You know, other members of the Shoji family are also watching uh, Eric Shoji tweeting from Germany saying that he is watching on OC Sports Online. And uh, I'm a, I'll give a shout out there. He played for me for a couple of years. Yeah, playing professionally. He says, hey, look, love watching the OC Sports TV video here in Germany. So, hey, Eric, what's up? There you go. And there's Mom Mary. And there is uh, Chris Shoji. It's Tom Shoji, Dave's brother, his wife. They, uh, he and Malia. Malia's to Mary's, Mary's left. She drove up from, uh, she and her mom drove up from Oregon today, four hours to see this match. Good, solid Hawaii crowd. Uh, a much larger than the new crowd, wouldn't you say? I would say so, and appreciative of the performance thus far by Hawaii. Here's Sklar off the block, and that one just narrowly missed, bouncing on that sideline. It's a point for Duke. They trail by four. Hawaii with a golden opportunity here to go up 2-0 on the 21st ranked team in the country. And, and uh, Sklar with her 10th kill to lead all players on the court. She's hit a, she had a lot of swings so far. Higgins goes back row to Long, and she just sort of shoved it into that back row area past the diving deep pass. Well, Ginger Long, that was, that was a nifty shot right there. I'll tell you what was great about it. It was a broken play. Hawaii was out of system. The only set that Taylor Higgins can make was a short one to the pipe set in the back row. And Taylor, um, uh, Ginger Long did a nice job of not taking a full swing there. Yeah, a shrewd decision that time by Long. It worked out. Chance now for Hawaii. They go right side on Aloha ball in set two. Taylor got dug up. Sklar against the double block. One hand saved Higgins on the dink. Taylor gets a full swing at it and puts it down for a Hawaii point. And the Rainbow Wahine take a two sets to none lead on the Duke Blue Devils in this opening match of the NCAA tournament. Hitting 310 for the match here in Seattle and an opportunity to maybe open the broom closet. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the McDonald's match statistics through two, Chris. What well, jumps right out, obviously, is the kill percentage. Hawaii hitting 310, Duke hitting 099, hitting negative in the first set in case you missed that one. That one more errors than kills. And for Hawaii, it's again a block party. Five 
blocks for Hawaii, only one for Duke. And that, that pretty much tells the story on the stat line. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena on the campus of University of Washington, Kanoa Leahy and Chris McLaughlin. Yeah, it seemed as though the Blue Devils were the team, a little shaken, particularly by that Hawaii block early. And the Rainbow Wahine playing pretty well for a team that didn't have much tape on the opposition. Yeah, Dave Shochi and Scott Wong and Robin Amo Santos, they've got to give a lot of credit, get a lot of credit for making the proper adjustments with little information. They're playing this Duke team eyeball to eyeball at the net. They, they kind of know what to do with Obami and Scalar, but uh, I would worry a little bit about the middles in case Duke's middles get going. It could be dangerous. And they've got to continue to do a good job on Emily Sklar and Jamie Obami. Gotta love that name, Jamie Obami. <laughs> So it will be the Blue Devils to serve first here in set number three, and they get started exactly how they needed to with an immediate point. Sasha Karolov, a 5'9 sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina, able to drop it in for an ace. Was born in Brooklyn, her mom Marina, a member of the Belarusian national volleyball team in the mid-80s. Here's Obamey from the back row. That one blocked back and in for a roof. It was Kelsey Williams, the setter for Duke, who thought it would ricochet out of play. But another roof job put up by Hawaii, and it was Taiman Olivan. I thought it was going out as well, but that was well in. Good block by Ty. So now Taylor Higgins with the serve. Pass by Karolov. They go left side to Scalar, and nobody home on the dink. So a point for the Blue Devils. Now again, we reiterate, Calais Greeley suffering an injury in set number one. We have not seen from her since. It appeared to be a right ankle injury. Ginger Long has played in her place from that point on. And played well. And if you're Dave Shoji, if Ginger Long and the team continues to play well, no reason to risk Calais Greeley going back out there, right? As Olivia McGill is able to slap it down for the kill. Let's take a look at what happened in the opening set. Kalei Greeley on the far side. You see the right ankle right there just gave out on her. And so she's been on the sideline getting treatment ever since. But if you're Dave Shoji, best case scenario, Hawaii continues to play well and you can save her for a potential round two matchup. Here's Scalar from off the net, dug up by Kahakai. Higgins high and away and along. Big swing, big kill, Ginger Long. Oh, Ginger Long is bringing it. She goes up, gets good height, good extension, hits high, goes over the block, not trying to bury it straight down. Smart play. Step out, this is Whitaker, and she hit it fat and long. Was there a touch up front? No touch. Another point for Hawaii. It is four serving two. Karloff, another good pass. She's, she's a terrific libero, I'll tell you. She and Mendoza both having a solid match tonight, on, both Derek, passing and digging. Another good pass by Karloff. Sklar had to left hand it over, missed the court wide, and another rocky start for Duke. Hawaii taking advantage. Well, he started off strong with the ace and then couldn't take advantage of it. And another timeout forced on the Blue Devils. Back here at Alaska Airlines Arena on the campus of the University of Washington, Hawaii up two sets to none on the Duke Blue Devils, the only opening round game in the NCAA tournament that pits two nationally ranked teams against one another. Dave Shoji, his 40th season at the helm. His team's 0-5 versus the teams that made the NCAA field this year, but Rainbow Wahine trying to change that trend here tonight. Obamey from the back row. Good touch by Taylor. She tapped it over, but it was sniffed out by Williams. Now Scalar from the outside. The dig long. Taylor off of one leg. An awkward approach, but it'll be a net violation against the Blue Devils. Another point for Hawaii. And again, starting to roll here in the early goings of set three, Chris. A good early timeout by Jolene Nagel, the Duke coach. Here's let's watch the net violation right there. Following through, see the forearms on the top of the cable there. Kahakai to serve. Duke hitting negative 286 in this third set. And that one wide of the antenna. Elise Whitaker on the step out had to drift a little too far. And it's now a 6-0 run 
for Hawaii. They're up a handful. Jolene Nagel called back what I thought was a good timeout at 5-2 to slow Hawaii down. She may have to use her second timeout here pretty soon because Hawaii is just on a roll. Here's Whitaker again. Ruth, Ginger Who else? Who else? The hot one. Ginger Long. Oh, my goodness. She goes up and penetrates over the net, presses the ball back into the court. That left hand. She got it with her right hand. And just what, what a night she's having. Five kills, six digs, two blocks. Her career high in kills was nine against San Diego State, but this might be. And she's been passing well, too. They tried to pick on her, and she's been passing well. As the step out goes to Elise Whitaker, this might be the match of her career, Ginger Long. Even if the numbers aren't to a career high level, this stretch of volleyball we have seen from her since late in that first set, about as good as we've seen. I would totally agree. And I've watched every minute she's played ever. Served by Scalar into the net. Worst case scenario for the Duke Blue Devils as they find themselves down a half dozen, nine serving three, and they just have yet to really get their bearings here in Seattle. And Scalar, their big attacker with 11 kills now in the back row. Not good news for Duke. Mendoza sends it deep. And it's pushed over on the second touch by Dykmeister. Middle set to Adolfo. And the middles for Hawaii. So efficient in this match. Kaleo Dolfo now four kills, batting a thousand. Olivia McGill in the, in the other time, rotation, time, seven time. kills, hitting 500. What else can well, you ask for? Well, what, what Hawaii had to do was pass well in order to get it to them. Hawaii's passing well. Step out. This is Whitaker blocked by Long. Obey me now from the outside. Blocked in roof. Adolfo and Taylor saying not on our watch. And another timeout signaled by Duke's Jolene Nagel as the Rainbow Wahine have been impenetrable at the net here tonight. Beautiful Seattle, Washington. Uh, that kind of reminds me of a book you were telling me about earlier on the trip. Chris. Yeah, Boys in the Boat. One of the best sellers, the uh, New York Times bestseller list the last year. And uh, the story of the University of Washington men's crew team back in 1936. If you haven't read it, a great read. I went over there to the boathouse yesterday to see yeah. if I could find some paraphernalia. And it's, uh, it's quite an experience. I think you enjoyed the book. Every single person we've talked to so far on this trip, you've suggested and recommended <laughs> that read. Yeah, it was a good one. Hawaii up 11-3 here in the And Hawaii better third. not let their guard down. This Duke team's good enough to come back at them. They better be careful. And again, Blue Devils scrambling. They have to send a free ball Hawaii's way. Higgins goes middle. Adolfo lays the smack down again. Yeah, I was surprised there that, that Higgins went to Adolfo there. Normally, when she sets that ball from off the net, the eight or nine foot line, she normally goes outside. She'll go that 31 set to, to uh, um, Olivia McGill, who hangs in the air a little bit longer, and there's a little more leeway. 12 serving three. They attack Sklar. Has a little trouble in the initial touch. So she's relegated to just two handing it over. But what we'll go right side. Taylor against a double block. And it's all good. Another point for Hawaii, and they're up a 10 spot on the Blue Devils. This is a 5-0 run for the Rainbow Wahine. And Jolene Nagel. Uncertain as to how to light the fire underneath this Duke squad right now. And they've got their best attacker. Emily Scalar stuck in the back row right now. Mm, tickles the tape, so it's an overpass joust at the net. Won by Ginger Long. That has become one of the stories of this match is the play off the bench by the 5'11 junior. It really is the story. You know, if you want to narrow it down to one thing, it would be that Ginger Long coming off and playing some clutch volleyball for the injured Kalei Greeley. 14 serving three, Mendoza still at the service line. Step out goes to Whitaker, and the hard angle works this time for the 6'2 sophomore she from lead, California. Leads them in blocks with 101. Made all tournament in the Stanford Invitational earlier. That was a tough tournament. So to make all tournament, that tournament was uh, pretty special. She was a Fab 50 player when she was in high school. High school All-American. Scored by Williams, Kahakai the pass. Middle set, Adolfo off one leg, off the touch right there is Scalar. So the step out, this one goes to Tucker. And she hit it long, was there a touch? No touch, point Hawaii. And Duke just cannot string and compound scoring stretches together right now. And they've had opportunities, they've had good passes. They had a great pass there in transition. They ran a, a fast backslide. Oh, what a serve by Nikki Taylor. Middle. 
insult to injury here for the Blue Devils as a miscommunication takes place on the Nikki Taylor serve. It was a very difficult serve, but fell right between the libero Karolov and Emily Skalar. Taylor again took something off. Skalar handles it. High and away it goes to Obaney. Blocked back. Right there is Skalar to keep it going. Step out to Tucker. Long got her fingertips on it, so a chance for Hawaii. Here is Ginger Long. The roll shot. And it'll be a kill for Ginger Long, and Hawaii continues to make a statement here on opening night of the NCAA tournament. Ginger Long just continues to make one great decision after another, given the set that she, she's gotten from Taylor Higgins. If it's right in her wheelhouse, she swings away. If it's not, she, you know, she sort of executes some sort of off-speed shot to the open courts in the, on, the, on the Duke side of the court. And I'm telling you, she's just been successful time and time again. Obamey, the date, and that time pulled the string for positive effect. And it'll be the Blue Devils serving five, serving 17. And again, we shared this sentiment on senior night for Ginger Long. She had the three kills. She had the match point kill. But you got to feel good for her. She's been through quite a bit this season. Began the year as a starter. As Adolfo hits it into the net. And then sort of found herself out of the lineup for a considerable amount of time. But hey, it's always that next person up. You're one injury away from being called upon, and she has answered the bell. She really has. She gets the, the fireman award tonight. Nice pass by Mendoza. Taylor, hard angle, and that one misses wide. So a point for Duke, and stringing a little bit together I now. Dave Church has got to call a timeout here. Point makes another error here. He said two sloppy plays, one by uh, Higgins on a bad sack, and Adolfo a bad choice on her attack, and Taylor a bad choice. I'm sure Dave will call a timeout. They don't clean things up here. Long, blocked, kept alive by Mendoza. Kahakai two hands it deep. Sklar traces it down, tight to the net. And then it's pitter-patter back and forth. Hawaii with it. Step out, Adolfo. Couldn't get all of it. The dig by Williams. Tucker got blocked by Adolfo. Bump set goes to Obaney. Through the double block and down. Point Duke. They're within single digits. And Dave Shoji certainly thinking about a break in the action. And he, in fact, does. Look at Jason Olsen and signal for a Hawaii timeout. We'll keep things here. We'll give credit to Duke here. They're Duke, they were patient in this rally. Obami goes up and just challenges the block there, goes after Hawaii's smallest blocker, Higgins, and just attacks it, wiggles it through the block, and gets their fourth point in a row. I told you Hawaii cannot let up because this Duke team is, is, uh, is just too good. Their best foot hasn't been put forward yet tonight in this third set. Now they're hitting negative for the second set tonight. First set, they hit negative 051. Now they're hitting five kills, eight errors, hitting negative 143. So this is not their normal offensive output. You know, they had the Met Nation assist this year. They're the number two in kills this year. So this, this, this isn't the same team we're watching right now. Duke four and four versus teams that made it into the NCAA tournament this season. They finished third in the ACC behind North Carolina and Florida State. Miami came in fourth. All four of those teams made it to the tourney. How would you compare the upper echelon of the ACC to the upper echelon of the Big West Conference, Hawaii's Conference? I would say that the upper echelon is probably pretty similar to the You know, UNC, North Carolina, Chapel Hill, you know, they're ranked seventh in the country, and Duke takes them to the fifth set about a week ago, 15-13 in the fifth at Chapel Hill. So that upper end is, is pretty darn good, like Hawaii and Long Beach State are good at their, at their top end of the Big West. We'll see if the Blue Devils have one more run in them to try to make this a match. Well, one thing Dave Sergi has control of is momentum now. He's only used one timeout. Uh, Jolene Nagel has used both of her timeouts. Served by Williams. Down the line it goes long. Handles the pass nicely. They go right side, back row to Taylor. Blocked. One handed up by Higgins. Mendoza bumps it outside the long. Fingertips of the block and Karolov the save. Now Obaney dumps it off of the block. Kahakai sets up long. A big swing by her. Karolov the diving save. Now Vucic from the right side. Mendoza keeps this rally going. Taylor from behind the three meter line. Blocked by Obaney. And the Blue Devils have something going. Oh, some great volleyball on both sides of the net there. Mendoza with a great dig in the back row. Well, Baby has a nice back set from Higgins. Nikki Taylor just trying to keep that ball in play. It wasn't quite where she wanted it in her wheelhouse. Step out, Adolfo. Off the block, diving save, Karolov. Now they're starting to pick up a lot of balls off of the block touches. 
The Blue Devils with it again. Williams goes back row to Scalar. Mendoza the dig. Adolfo sets up long. Scalar keeps it going for the Blue Devils. Now Vucic from the opposite side. Blocked back and Roof. She took a little too much off of it that time. It was Adolfo and Long up in the air. And notice, Kanoa, that Hawaii stopped the bleeding not with an attack, but with a block. It's been the story all year long that Hawaii's block just keeps them in games, wins games for them night in and night out. Ten and a half team blocks for Hawaii compared to two for the Blue Devils. And Ginger Long deals an ace. Oh, and on one of their best passers, Emily Scalar, the rock of Gibraltar, finally shows a chink in the armor. Great serve by Ginger Long. A pivotal exchange there as Hawaii gets the roof, gets the ensuing point. And now a few moments being taken as Jamie Obamey ties her shoe. Ginger Long, see the service aces and service errors on the season. But she has filled the bill. So Duke is trying to slow Hawaii down. Now they use up both their timeouts. We got a tied shoe here. We got a substitution. Anything to slow Hawaii's momentum down. Duke is attempting. Hey, it's a Duke athletic team. They will play the cerebral game. There's no <laughs> yeah. doubt about that. Moves along with the serve, diving past Scalar. They go to Obaney on the outside over the double block, diving save Mendoza. Bump set though goes over the net, and Hawaii able to escape. They keep it going. Mano Leval winds up, uncoils, and unleashes. The Mano Leval got a rest during that, during that last series when Duke went on their run. Mano Leval was on the bench. So she got some rest. She's coming in with some live legs and a live arm. And she's going to give Hawaii a lift right here, in my opinion. 20 serving nine as the Rainbow Wahine on the precipice of an opening round sweep. Obamey. That one through the hands of Mendoza and down for a Duke point. But and you guess continue what? That to say, out. You, yeah. six feet out. Sarah Mendoza knows it. And you continue to feel like the Blue Devils until you have that final point of the third set. This is not a team you can count out. Absolutely. Mendoza bumps that one straight up in the air. It'll be long from the back row. Dug up by Karolov. Left side here, Sklar. The double block hadn't quite formed, but long able to dig it up. Mano Leval hit it into the net. And that is a point for Duke. Mano Leval trying a little bit too hard there to bury the ball and, and be a hero. All she needed to do was hit some high hands and keep the ball in play. And maybe let her block do the job. 11 serving, 20. Obaney with the serve. Pass tight to the net, and Higgins able to win the battle. She was just quicker to the ball than middle blocker Jordan Tucker. What's savvy by Taylor Higgins. That's some volleyball IQ for you. She knows about where the ball is going to travel. It gets up close to the net. She knows it's going to go over, so she just helped it over rather than try to set it and maybe cause a net violation. Now the freshman out of Punahou, Claire Marie Anderson, to serve. Sklar handles the pass well. They go step out to Tucker, blocked by Manole Val. Tucker on the second touch, hammers it to the floor. Great rebound by Tucker after she got blocked. Right away, second quick leap, good arm swing. She, how about some celebration there by Tucker too? She wants this Duke team to come back and show their best side. She's still hitting negative 167. She's the team leader in kill percentage on the season. McGill, also the team leader in kill percentage, and there's a reason why. So smooth, so steady. Here's that 31 set again. Difficult timing set. Great connection between Higgins and McGill. Eight kills for Olivia right now. Only one air hitting 538. Wow. Add five blocks to that stat line as well as Higgins pumps it long. And the point for the Blue Devils. So what closing in on a ticket to the second round and potentially a rematch with their old nemesis, it seems, here at this time of year, the Washington Huskies. The serve by Ella Trosh. Middle set, McGill. And she puts it down yet again. It is like clockwork. Nine kills now for Olivia McGill. A McGill kill again. Five blocks, eight kills. She's just getting the job done. I guess that's her ninth kill. Manu Leval. The Hawaii fans that are in the arena, they can smell it. Left side, it goes to Sklar off the fingertips of the block. Manu Leval keeps it alive. Ginger Long down the line. Good dig, Elitrosh. 
Here's Scalar from off the net. One hand save Higgins. Second touch Mendoza and a free ball goes Duke's way. Step out, Whitaker. And she's able to extend the Duke hopes. Good swing by Whitaker. Only played 12 matches last year, but she's gotten a lot of action this year. Her brother, Being the leading blocker. Her brother Corey is a 6'4", 290-pound offensive lineman for Nebraska. And of course, they just got a new head coach, former Oregon State head coach Mike Riley. Taylor had to adjust. Flat-footed hit. Chance for the Blue Devils. Obamey off the quick outside set dug up by Mendoza. Ginger Long winds up, plays it off the block, but she's roofed. Mendoza let it by. She thought it was going to go out, but credit the Blue Devils trying to stay alive here. It looked from here like it was going to go out as well, so I can see why Sarah's first reaction was to let it go. Goes off the middle block. It looks like it's going to go out. Instead, it drops right on the line. So Scalar with the serve, and it's an ace. And the Blue Devils back to within seven. 16 serving 23. So Dave showed he's got a timeout left. And he brings Kahakai in from on only A little slow down there, the server there. Squire, good service. She leads them in aces with 28. She attacks Kahakai. Mendoza comes over to help her out. It's Taylor from off the net. Blocked and roof. And Duke right back in it, down six. A 4-0 Blue Devils run. Starting to make some of the Hawaii fans a little more uncomfortable for what it's worth. Can they keep it going? Kaka, this time handles the pass. Middle set, McGill over the double block attempt of Duke. I think everybody in the gym, including all three of Duke's blockers, knew the ball was going to McGill, and they still couldn't stop it. Well, they got two blockers up. It was a solid block. McGill found a way with a little cutback shot. Hawaii at match point. Aloha ball for the first round match. Obaney from the outside off the block. Long traces down the first touch off the ricochet. Now Taylor from the opposite position. Diving save by Sklar. Here's Obaney. The dink. Pushed back over by Taylor. Obaney a second time. Blocked and roofed by Taylor. And Hawaii moves on into the second round of the NCAA tournament. 25-17 in the third, so Hawaii does it. Ekahi Elua Aloha in Seattle against the Duke Blue Devils. The final numbers 25-15, 25-19, 25-17. And one of the more all-around impressive performances for the Rainbow Wahine. Here's that last sequence once again. Obaini tried to dink it over to no avail. And then falling back, it was Nikki Taylor eclipsing the kill attempt. And so the final team blocking numbers for Hawaii, 11 and a half team blocks to four for the Duke Blue Devils. And for the first time this season, the Rainbow Wahine defeat a top 25 team and defeat a team that made it in to the NCAA tournament field. Uh, some of the cheers here in the Alaska Airlines Arena for the Washington Huskies making their way onto the floor. They'll take on New Hampshire on the other side of this sub-regional bracket. The winner will get the Rainbow Wahine tomorrow night and most expect Washington to advance and it would create yet another showdown between the Rainbow Wahine and the Huskies. It would be the third time in five years that these two teams matched up. The last two times it wound up in Washington's favor, including a heartbreaking five-setter just a couple of years ago. Chris McLaughlin is with head coach Dave Shoji on a victorious first round night. Chris. The Washington Huskies. Dave, what a match. Uh, well, let's start off with Ginger Long and her play tonight. Well, you know, she's played well all year. She's been a trooper as far as just staying in there, not starting, losing her starting job maybe, and not playing as much as she wanted to, but keeps working hard. And I always tell them they're one play away from playing, and then she was tonight, and she did a great job. You got a little nervous there at the end as uh, Duke started to play a little bit better, and you guys, you guys were sliding out as well. Are you concerned? Well, I was trying to tell them to, like you say, stay in the <laughs> present because it's, it's one point at a time, and uh, we got a little ahead of ourselves, like, Oh, gosh, we're way ahead. We're going to win. Uh, you know, we just can't have that anyway. We, we took care of it. You know, your, Sarah Mendoza also thought did a great job tonight. Your, your, your thoughts on her back row play? 
Well, it's easy for her because we're trying to channel the ball to her, you know. We're trying to take the line and force their hitters that hit at Sarah because we know she's reliable and, you know, she comes up with dig after dig and she's, she's been our best digger. Finally, your thoughts on the University of Washington tomorrow night, should they win this next match? I think New Hampshire's going to win, Chris. <laughs> no, you know, Washington's a great team. They lost twice down the stretch, though. They lost to Utah and Colorado, so that kind of gives you some hope. That they're, they're vulnerable in places. They've gotten, they're down two starters, so we'll just have to see. Congratulations, Coach. Great win tonight. All right, thanks, Chris. Back to you, Kanoa. Thanks a lot, Chris. Hawaii improving to 22 and 6 overall on the year. The Duke Blue Devils see their season end with a 22 and 8 record. The Bank of Hawaii players of the match, Olivia McGill. It's like Groundhog Day. She is Miss Consistency. 10 kills, hitting 600 with a handful of blocks. Emily Scalar, as advertised, she was the top hitter for the Blue Devils. 11 kills, 5 digs, and 1 ace. But again, in the end, it is Hawaii with a dominating effort against the 21st ranked team in the country. They outplayed Duke in just about every category, serving, hitting, digging, even setting, blocking for sure. And the Rainbow Wahine move on, awaiting once again the winner of the Washington and New Hampshire match. Now we should remind you if Washington is to win, the Pac-12 network will carry the second round match tomorrow. So uh, stay updated in your local listings for exactly where you can find that match. Let's update the bracket here in this Seattle regional here at Alaska Airlines Arena. It is Hawaii moving on with a sweep win over the Duke Blue Devils and they await the winner of third seeded Washington and New Hampshire. Utah got past Kansas State in Lincoln, Hofstra and Nebraska to do battle on that side of the bracket. Chris McLaughlin once again joins me and you know, you look at some of the performances, Nikki Taylor, 10 kills, Olivia McGill, we saw as the player of the match, 10 kills, hitting 600, Taimon Olevao, eight kills, hitting 412. I mean, you go right on down the line, but the feel-good story tonight, and you asked Dave Shoji about it, Ginger Long having to come in for an injured Calais Greeley, and she performed admirably. Definitely the hero of the night, Ginger Long. You can see how the smile on Dave Shoji's face when, when I asked him that question. I, I think uh, nobody is happier than Dave Shoji to see Ginger Long play the way she did tonight. Tonight, What a great story. And, and you know, we, we knew Hawaii was sort of peaking at the right time, but they beat a good Duke team tonight, held Duke to a hitting an 0, 0 0-5-0 hitting percentage. That's, that's really, really good. They had only uh, you know, 28 assists. Normally they would average 20. They would average like 42 assists or something. So they held the, their offense down. Uh, so great blocking schemes by Hawaii. 11 and a half blocks. I mean, that's phenomenal uh, against a team like this that's so offensive-minded in Duke. So now Hawaii awaits the winner of Washington and New Hampshire, and the smart money is on the Huskies advancing. There is concern about Calais Greeley. Well, no, Dave showed you said New Hampshire's going to yeah, win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He called it. He called it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can make a little wager with him after uh, we get off the air here. But, you know, the concern certainly for Calais Greeley and her physical health going into that match tomorrow. Uh, there is that issue there. Obviously, Washington and Hawaii, they have done this before. This won't be the first time they tango. How much of a chance do you give the Rainbow Wahine tomorrow? I will tell you this. As I was down there, we're getting ready for Dave Shoji's interview. The team jogged by, and they all gave me a high five. And guess who else was jogging by? Kalei Greeley. Kalei Greeley. So that might be good news for the Bows, or, or maybe Ginger Long is the one to go to right now. Hawaii is too deep at every position. I think they're very lucky that way. Tomorrow night is going to be tough. They're going to play. Dave showed you. You saw he likes the fact they have two starters out with some injuries, does Washington Huskies. And, um, and he likes the fact that um, Clay Adolfo and two others were here um, you know, two years ago and almost won the match. So I think he has a good feeling about maybe pulling the upset, maybe coming in under the radar. I don't know. Uh, he had a little, little glimmer in his eye when I talked to him about that, and I think he's really looking forward to having the girls get up for tomorrow night. No problem getting them excited, I'll tell you that. That's for sure. And I think that we have alluded to the fact all season, and many that have watched and followed the Rainbow Wahine this year would say, this is a team that had yet throughout the majority of the year to really fulfill and play at its highest potential. I think we're seeing as close to that as we have seen in the last two matches, the season finale in the regular season against UC Davis and tonight against Duke. And so you would hope that Hawaii can at the very least give likely Washington the best possible Hawaii effort that they have. I couldn't agree with you more. 
Well, that's it for us. Again, if Washington advances past New Hampshire, you can catch that Hawaii-Washington match on the Pac-12 network. That will do it for us. Chris McLaughlin, it's been a pleasure here in the 2014 Rainbow Wahine volleyball season. We want to thank the rest of the OC Sports crew. We really appreciate the effort of each and every one of you. Don't forget about the post-game show, everybody. That's it for us in Seattle. For Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Aloha.